Right, the utterly refined entertainer, as he called himself, Cyril Fletcher, uh, who uh, became uh, more famous to the uh, British public in the uh, 70s and early 80s when he appeared in a programme called That's Life on the BBC. It was a Saturday evening show and uh, watched by millions. And uh, and he uh, repeated uh, his uh, his utterly refined odes, his very posh uh, you know, comic poems that he uh, recited. This is one of them, The Ode of the Fletcher, recorded uh, late 30s, 40s, 1940s, around that period. That tune has nothing to do with me, whatever, but it makes a nice change, doesn't it? Like the lawn short and the usual odd ode, odd ode number one. This is the tale of Christabel Crane, who took the wrong bag out of the train and quite unwitting did retire with one containing male attire. And thus, when she undressed for bed, found men's pyjamas there instead. Designed, it seemed, for one of vigour, with quite a streamlined sort of figure. So girlish-like admired the stuff, and found some rhymes wrote on the cuff. And quite excited cried, I betcha these here belong to Cyril Fletcher. Then realised, although no prude, that she was standing in the mood. So cried, if he saw the answer, I know he'd say you wear him, duck. And grabbing parts with zips upon, she shyly put the trousers on. The sound she had to make a thrill, taking parts she didn't fill. Then, with a startled look so fine, said, Cool, he must be wearing mine. And pictured Cyril tall and lean, in nightly made a great machine. But feared it might disturb his ease to find it finished at uh, his knees. Then, diving neath the eider down, she blushed and gave a thoughtful frown, and murmured, Oh, confound the chap, I bet he wears my boudoir cap. And as retaliation shone, put Cyril's fancy bed socks on, then cried, That ends my girlish win, and I'm dreaming never no more of him. Of old number two coming, this is the tale of General G, who had no butter for his tea, not even margarine to spread, just chunks of dry synthetic bread. So fearing that he might grow lean, he tried some solid brilliantine, which while not very nice to eat, ensured at least his breath smelt sweet. Then following this queer repast, he hurried off to the old nasty, and clasping him in fond embrace, blew lilac fumes all down his face, at which the Fuhrer staggered back and nearly gave old G the sack. This smell, he said, fills all the room. You're like a ruddy rose in bloom. And let me tell you, General G, one smelling's quite enough for me. And General Goering, most irate, explained that he was losing weight. No butter left, no margarine, just earth hat, crust, and brilliant tea. At which the other pointed out that Nazi cheeks should not be felt. Said Goering, shaking like a jelly, an army marches on its stomach. A button for your snorts and frowns, it's half the size of Teddy Brown's. No lost my patience now, so thief, cried Hitler, calling for the priest. And speechless with annoyance, he had Goering jailed for fragrancy. Mm -hmm. 